In this video, we'll be putting together an all AMD, and when I say all AMD this time, yes, for those who were sticklers in one of our previous videos, I mean all AMD, both CPU and graphics card gaming PC. Now, we're not going with something overkill for gaming, a 5800X, which is an eight core 16 thread Zen 3 chip. It's going to be plenty for those games. We won't see any major improvements at all, bumping up from a 5800X to a 5900X or 5950X, so there's really no need to allocate more of the budget to a better CPU. And then uh, we've also got an X, uh, RX 6900 XT, which is pretty much the best AMD graphics card on the market right now. And for the motherboard, we're going with an ASRock X570 Tai Chi, a tried and true chipset, a tried and true motherboard from ASRock. But we've got a bunch of other stuff, all from the same company, and you're probably wondering why you didn't know this any sooner. So XPG is the gaming brand of A-Data, and you might have heard of A-Data from maybe some of their memory modules, some of their SSDs. I actually use quite a bit of their memory modules. One of their kits is in my racing sim right now. They make very affordable but very powerful memory. Uh, so they have reached out and wanted to sponsor a build with a bunch of stuff that they make that I'll be honest, I didn't know they made. So um, this is news to me and most likely you as well. First up, we've got the Levant 240 mil AIO. It's a pretty sexy looking red. I'm not gonna lie. The fans look really good here. The block looks nice. So I'm excited to build with that. We've also got below that, they call it the core reactor. Check that out. That's a uh, 80 plus gold 750 watt power supply. Gonna love building with that. It looks super compact as well. I love 750 watt units that aren't very large. They don't take up a lot of space in their cases. As for the cases, this is the Defender Pro. And this is probably the most shocking revelation of this entire project. I had no clue that A-Data or XPG specifically makes a mid tower, but the Defender Pro looks to be on the plus side in terms of performance and uh, feature set. So we've got a pretty airy front panel here. You can see a nice mesh with a little like squarish or diamond pattern design there. Not too bad. We've got plenty of rad support up top and up front. We've got a 120 mil fan at the rear. You can slide up and down. And uh, RGB fans, I think. Yeah, RGB fans, wow. Who would have thought? Now, like I said earlier, A-Data, XPG, you probably know them for their RAM. They are flexing their muscles hard in this case. So these here are Spectrix D50 Extreme Memory Kits. These things clock up to 4,800 megahertz a piece, and they sent us 32 gigs in total. We're gonna populate all four DIMM slots and see how high we can get these frequencies, but these are incredibly well bin kits. And then we've got a few other things to show off here. So we've got one of their RGB strips. This is, again, this is all from XPG. We've got three more of their RGB RGB fans and we've got these look really cool here. I can't wait to build with these. These are actually like RGB cables, more or less, and uh, they can rock some pretty cool effects as well. So we're gonna have to experiment a bit with that. I'm pretty sure the color scheme is more or less gonna be like black and red, just because our Radon logo, the 6900 XT is gonna be glowing red. I think we can change all the fans to red. So it should look pretty stealthy, but um, you know, we need to experiment a bit, just see how it works. The motherboard really doesn't have any red accents, but uh, it's more or less a neutral kind of gray and black tone. So um, and the fact that we have RGB pretty much everywhere else means that we can customize those lights to fit said color scheme. So I'm excited to see how this looks at the end of the day. Again, I've not built with most of these parts from XPG just because I didn't know they existed. But um, yeah, that's why this video exists. Big thanks to XPG for sponsoring this video, sponsoring this build, sending all these components. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start first with our motherboard. And excuse, excuse me, thank you, PepsiCo. All right. So we're gonna pull this bad boy out, set her down like so. Then we're gonna switch out over to our 5800X. And I've used both of these before, by the way, when we were doing our testing. That's why some of these boxes look like they've, uh, they've been used before. That's because they in fact have been. Let's pop this open. God, I'll get a close up shot of that. Look how good. I love the way these CPUs look. The, the Ryzen CPUs just look so nice. Not that you're gonna see any of this in your build when it's fully uh, fully assembled, but anyway, we're gonna pull back on this lever, swing it upright, and we're gonna install it. This orientation here, drops in, pop her back down, clip, easy peasy. Next up, we're gonna focus on this RAM. So like I said earlier, these memory modules are insane. Uh, these are just like crazy modules, crazy fast, very well binned. They are sealed. I should probably unseal them. Ooh, mama. Oh yeah, these are looking good. 
So we do have RGB capabilities here. This can be synced up with pretty much any motherboard software out there. Uh, Asus Aura, Gigabyte, RGB Fusion, MSI Mystic Light, ASRock, Polychrome, I think is what they call it. So um, these look really good. I think there's a plastic cover on these too. Yep, there they are. Okay, so pull that off. Wow, these look really good. And that's one side, this is the other side. Super nice. So let's get one of these in here. Just kind of see how it looks. Pull back on all four tabs. We're gonna be populating all four dim slots. Slot this bad boy in. Clip, clip, nice. Only thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure of is that you get rid of fingerprints before you install these. These look too good to have fingerprints on them. They are fingerprint magnets, but it's the price you pay for some beautiful chrome finishing. And I just realized XPG includes a lint-free cloth to clean them. So don't use your shirt like I just did. This is actually really convenient. They knew that they were fingerprint magnets. They're like, you know what? We're gonna help our customers out just a bit. Now we need to install our NVMe SSD. And to do that, we need to remove this very large metal plate that covers the lower half of the Tai Chi. They actually include a tool to remove these. Uh, these look like Torx screws. I'm just using my own little kit here. So let me get this last one out. It should just pop up, I think. Maybe, I don't wanna break it. There we go. Yeah, there's just a little thermal pad there that was sticking. So we're gonna let it sit like so. We have here our Gamix S50 Lite. Now this is actually a more affordable Gen 4 NVMe drive. It's not the fastest NVMe, uh, especially you know with relation to Gen 4 speeds, but uh, this is one that uh, is gonna be a lot cheaper than uh, some of the other offerings out there. So we're gonna slot this in. And why, why am I, oh, actually, no. This is held down by the plate. I, I'm always confused. I'm like, where is the screw for this thing? It's actually held down by the, uh, the metal plate here in the Tai Chi. So we'll start with that one. All right, and that's it. The platform is ready to go. All right, and next up, we're gonna install the motherboard. We do have an integrated rear IO shield. So we don't need to worry about that. Standoffs are already installed in the case. Always wanna double check that. We're gonna move these fan cables above uh, just so that we don't, you know, get those stuck behind the rear house shield. Definitely not fun if that ever happens. It actually looks like we're pretty good as is. I totally should have gotten out the hardware from the hard drive cage before setting the motherboard in here. Do as I say, not as I do. And we are looking good. So let's stand it up right. So far, we do have uh, quite a bit of clutter to deal with with these uh, RGB fans. Obviously, you've got two different cable strands from each fan to worry about. We're gonna cable manage a bit right now, connect the front IO stuff. It's typically easier to do that with your power supply not in the case yet. And then, uh, yeah, then we will tackle the power supply. Actually, you know what? We won't do the power supply next, we'll do the AIO next. I think I wanna top mount it. There seems to be quite a bit of clearance up top here, which is nice in a mid tower. So we'll try we'll try top mounting the rad. We'll install a third RGB fan up front. So we have three intake fans, and then we'll have three exhaust fans, two up top and one at the rear. All right, so we've got front IO taken care of, and then HD audio here. Nice. Next up, we're gonna take care of USB three. Where is that header? On this board, it is right there. So we're gonna. Swing it around, connect it like so. I have no idea why I just developed a Southern accent, but I'm gonna roll with it. All right, so I do wanna install a third fan real quick too while we're back here uh, cable managing. Wow, that came off actually super easy. Not like, you know, uh, not like concerningly easy. It, there is a little mechanical lock here. It feels like they're using magnets. Yep, so like those, those magnets all across here. So they're, those are all, locking this thing in, holding it together. And there's also a small little mechanical connection uh, through these four little, little things that stick out. So this is actually super easy to connect and disconnect. In some cases, I'm like prying the heck out of it, just trying to just like, oh, and then you like fall back because you're putting so much force in it. I, it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm, I'm being dead serious. Some of those front panels are just like on there. This is so nice. Wow, 
That is so convenient. All right, so we've got the third fan in here up front and something else I really like about this layout, I've only seen one other case manufacturer do this. Uh, so kind of these circular cutouts in the chassis and the frame for uh, these front intake fans uh, means that you have unimpeded airflow. They're sometimes they're squared off, you know, and the edges of these blades, which are actually where more air is pulled in uh, are, are blocked off. Uh, so you're you're just maximizing airflow with this design. I, I really like that. Next up, we've got the Levante 240mm AIO. I just think it makes sense to install this next. Uh, so this is a pretty conventional AIO in terms of layout. The pump should be in the block. We have these addressable uh, LEDs in the fans as well as in the block itself. There are quite a few uh, RGB cables behind this case already, and the case itself actually supports uh, addressable RGB. So there's gonna be a bit of wiring to do. I kind of took care of some of it, but I'll, I'll just show you a quick little B-roll clip here of what it looks like. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to tackle. So I think adding this is just gonna make it um, uh, a, a, a little bit uh, a little bit more difficult, but this is, again, the price you pay for RGB connectivity. If you want all of your things RGB, you gotta deal with them wires. All right, so we're mounting these fans to the radiator now, and we're making sure that the fan blades are facing out and the same side as the tubing because we want these to exhaust air out the top of the case. So let me get this in there. We've got one more right here. We'll get this in there and I'll show you guys how we're gonna orient this. So we're gonna flip it upright. Actually not upright, but upside down. This is how we just had it. And it's gonna sit in the case just like this. You see, we actually have some space below the radiator and the fans um, between that and the motherboard. So this case actually has plenty of top mounting space, which is something that you don't usually see in mid towers like this. And the tubing should be plenty long. We'll have this flip around and we'll connect the block to the motherboard like so. And we're gonna connect this last one. So with the radiator mounted now, we can focus on getting the block situated. So I've got the standoffs that are included with the AIO already installed. Let's move these cables behind the motherboard tray so they're out of sight for now. We do have pre-applied thermal paste. I think we're just gonna stick with that for now. If we notice any uh, thermal issues, we can always swap that out later. But usually the stock stuff is okay enough. And we're gonna swing the block around through the AM4 standoffs. Use these little thumb screws, little thumb screw caps. That's tightened. This one's tightened, this one's tightened. All right, cool. And then for the tubing, I think we're just gonna have it kind of hang down like that. What do you think? Pretty clean, huh? And we've got the power supply next. So this is the Core Reactor 750 Gold again. It's backwards. There we go. So 80 plus gold power supply, pretty decent efficiency rating there. And you get a 10 year warranty, which I think speaks for itself. <gasps> Whoa, game to the extreme. So a little too extreme. So you can see how compact it is for a standard ATX PSU. And here's my hand for scale. So uh, actually very nice how short this is. And this case here, front to back, it's not super long. I mean, it's what you would expect from a mid tower. So you don't want a power supply that uh, extends too far forward because if you have a hard drive cage in here, which this case does, your cables are gonna get really crushed in there and you're not gonna have extra space for stowing those extra cables. So we've got the modular cables we need connected. I'm gonna move this rat's nest for now out of the way. Slide this power supply in from the right side of the case. Let's see here. Got quite a few cables to deal with. And I think it should fit. Again, this is why having a smaller ATX power supply, not one of those beefy bricks. Um, that's why having one of these comes in handy, especially in these mid towers here. All right, and with the power supply secured, we're gonna start focusing on some of the uh, wiring again. We'll try to cable manage a bit and then we'll install the RX 6900 XT last just because that's fairly easy to slot in and just power up with the PCIe cables. So this here is the Prime Air RGB extension cable. And right, we gotta get the, this is not how you open it. Don't do what I'm doing. There we go. So this will just adapt onto the end of our 24 pin, like so. And then this part here should be the only part of the 24 pin that you see 
inside your case when looking at it through the left panel. So it's literally just a cable extension, but it's ARGB. We can run some cool, pretty cool effects here. So uh, we're gonna wire this up. So we'll have RGB 24 pin uh, and RGB dual eight pin cables for the graphics card. And last up, our RX 6900 XT. This bad boy here, ooh, it's a beefcake. So it's actually about the same size, same dimensions as the 6800 XT reference but uh, you get a bit more power added to this card. Dual eight pin, of course. Let's see if you wanna show them rear IO port selection, only two display ports and a single HDMI 2.1 port. And then we have a type C port over here as well. And here we go, the install. AO tubes are just gonna rest right above the back plate here. Clip it in, looking good. So really the only color in this build excluding the RGBs, of course, and there are a ton of those in this build, uh, is in the red accents here with the 6900 XT. So maybe a white and red LED color scheme will suffice. We'll, uh, we'll find out. Okay, so um, quick revelation, the connector, the little clip here uh, for the 8-pin connector on this card, you can see it doesn't work because the connectors on the on the 6900 XT are flipped upside down. This is actually how a lot of cards do it, uh, but these cables only bend one way, and actually one of the quadruple sets of cables here run through the LED tubing. So you can see there's only four exposed cables and the other four for the total eight uh, are in these RGB little tubes here. I didn't see anywhere in the manual or the quick start guide where you could flip this around, which means the only way to really install this is to do it from above. And that kind of, that just breaks up the aesthetic because I really like how we've got the 24 pin installed here. Uh, so unless we switch cards, which I don't want to do because this is the only 6900 XT I have, um, we'd have to install it that awkward way. I think we're just going to remove the dual eight pin RGB cables and we'll just keep the 24 pin for that little RGB accent piece. We'll run the stock uh, dual eight pins up to the card. All right, I know it's a bit disappointing that we don't have the dual eight pin RGBs here. That'd be pretty cool to see them all working together, but I still like the 24 pin up top. And uh, I think this is probably the cleanest look we could go with seeing as though our graphics card has those eight pins flipped downward instead of upward. Now my cable management here is uh, definitely not the best. I think that a large part of this stuff has to do with the sheer number of RGB cables to deal with. So we do have a lot of fans. We have six fans in total in here, which is quite a bit for a mid tower, but we have double that amount of cables because each of these fans is RGB compatible. Uh, the water block for the AIO is also RGB compatible and the case is RGB compatible and I can all be controlled up top. We'll show you that later. But uh, there's so much to deal with in terms of cable management here. And it's just one of the downsides of going RGB. You just got a lot more to work with. The good thing though, I feel like this case here is gonna be fairly simple to work with. So again, I didn't spend too much time cable managing, but I feel like, I feel like this would be pretty easy. I missed one ring there. Oh, I missed one there. Oh, I keep missing that one. Okay, let's see. That's it? Okay. Not bad. It's on. Uh, better than I thought it would be. All right, so things are looking good. I think it's fairly clean here on the left side. The right side, eh, again, not so much, but the left side looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and flip the switch. We've got it plugged in. Hopefully, everything works. Oh, oh looking good. Looking good so far. Now, if you're wondering why all this stuff is like neon green or lime green, it's because the motherboard was previously set to lime green for an older build, and we've wired all of the fan LEDs into the ARG better, uh, ARGB header in the Tai Chi. Um, so the motherboard essentially is controlling the colors of all these fans. So we'll fix that. This is set to red already, which is cool. Um, you can see actually a lot of the LEDs stem from the back of this 24 pin, and they kind of funnel forward like a fiber optic effect. So it's a little dimmer up front and it's a lot brighter at the rear. You can see it kind of just dissolve over time. Uh, but also those kind of look a, li a little weaker because we have so many LEDs uh, in the fans surrounding this build. So, uh, all right, let's get the LED situation sorted out. We'll try to color match as best as we can. And then uh, we'll put it through 3D Mark Time Spy and see how she stacks up. So we've installed Windows. We synced up the LEDs, I think as best we could. Now remember that Radon logo in the 6900 XT cannot be changed to any other color. It's just stuck at red. So we changed the fans and the XPG water block there with the AIO, as well as the 24 pin extension uh, to match that radon logo. So they're all red. The exception is in the RAM, and that's because we could put some pretty cool effects here uh, with, the, uh, with the DDR4. 
So I just ran a, a white lightning effect just to kind of change things up a bit. I'm not a huge fan of like the crazy animations, but you do have those options if it's something you're into. Now where the system really starts to flex its muscles is in gaming. This is a gaming PC. It should perform fairly well in our 3D Mark uh, Time Spy Synthetic here. Our score was 16,487 with again the RX 6900 XT and the Ryzen 7 5800X. That places us better than 99% of all submitted results. And this more or less proves the point I made in the beginning of this video about how we don't need a Ryzen 9 CPU for this to be a great gaming PC. Eight cores is often the sweet spot for games today, and you even have some headroom for streaming if you wanted to get into that as well. It's a great content creation CPU. It's fairly priced, more or less. I think Zen 2 at this point is still a better value just because we don't have much apart from like the X high-end SKUs from Zen 3 to choose from at the, at the moment. Maybe the 5700, the 5700X from uh, the Zen 3 lineup will be uh, a better buy. Usually those are, I wouldn't be surprised, but those don't exist yet. So we have just the, the 5800X to choose from uh, in the eight core department. But to score better than 99% of all results with just an eight core CPU, I mean, if anything, that should tell you how powerful the 6900 XT is. I mean, holy crap, what's our graphics score? 18,756. So all in all, I think this PC turned out very well. It looks pretty darn good considering we synced up all the RGBs. Usually what you'll see is like a build put together and it'll have just the standard rainbow effect running in the background. And it's just, you don't really get a true sense of the benefit of having RGB compatible hardware in a system unless it's fully synced up. To do that, you need to install an operating system. You need to install the RGB software. It takes some time. Not a lot of reviewers like to do that. I understand because usually these builds are deconstructed minutes after they finish filming with them. But um, I think that, you know, getting the colors to sync up with the reference 6900 XT here really paid off. I like the lightning effect that there. I just think it's just a nice breakup of the, the, the static red everywhere else. The case is surprisingly versatile. Did not expect this at all from XPG, a company that I've always thought just made memory modules and SSDs and things like that. Uh, volatile and non-volatile memory, basically. Uh, this case is not only great with respect to airflow, it's also great with respect to cable management at the rear, which is something I did not expect. It's got plenty of uh, radiator and uh, just AIO support in general up top, up to a 280 mil, I believe, up to a 360 mil up front and up to a 120 mil at the rear. Combine that with the fact that the AIO actually does a great job keeping our 5800X cool, especially while stress testing. Um, XPG makes literally everything you need for a system apart from the CPU, the graphics card and the motherboard which, you know, very few uh, companies out there are manufacturing CPUs and graphics cards and motherboard, yeah, maybe later. But uh, every other aspect of a build, you can purchase from ADATA to build an XPG system. That's pretty freaking incredible. I'm really thankful that they gave us a chance to build this kind of system. It's fun building with new hardware, stuff that I just haven't, you know, haven't seen before, haven't gotten to experience and work with. Uh, I think the looks for sure have paid off. So big thanks again to A Data for sponsoring this video, for sending all these components. You can find them all linked below if you want to build a system very similar to this. Again, if you buy the components we uh, were sent here, then you'll only need a graphics card, a CPU, and a motherboard that aren't from XPG if you wanted an XPG theme to build. And uh, like the benefit of buying multiple components from the same brand is they typically work very nicely together. So you shouldn't uh, shouldn't need to worry about you know, the cohesive aspects or the aesthetic aspects of a build uh, if you choose to purchase your parts that way. Uh, with that, if you guys like the build, if you like the performance, like the video overall, give this one a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Join our public Discord if you haven't already. That's linked below. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for building with me.